So just like space strategy games where Stellaris is my favorite and Simulation or Civ 6 is my favorite, I also have a favorite game in the survival category and that's Frostpunk. Uh, in this video I talk about the, what I consider to be one of the best build orders I've found yet. I'll admit it may not be the best uh, and uh, I'm sure there's others that are just as good but uh, this is one that worked really really well for me. In this particular build order for this game, I consider technology to be king. So I may do technology to dispense with the people suffering a little bit and having some discontent, but uh, I think that's the best way to survive. So as soon as the game starts, I'll build two workshops out in the uh, second ring, and then I'll start assigning people to gathering resources. I'll assign everybody to gather resources except for 10 engineers. Holding those 10 engineers in reserve makes things build a little faster. It gets the technology or the workshops built a little faster. So I'll put uh, 30 workers on wood crates, 15 workers on steel wreckage, and then the remaining five workers and five engineers, I'll assign them to a coal pile. Once the first workshop is completed, I'll assign uh, five engineers to it, and then I'll assign uh, beacon research that's the most important thing to get going in the early game and as soon as the second uh, workshops completed I'll assign the remaining five engineers to that as well it's important to make sure you start research before building anything else because that takes 10 wood if you build something and use up the wood that you need for research and that's going to delay your uh, progress even more you soon get a notification that more workers are needed so open the book of laws and I won't take the option to give children safe jobs. Instead I'll go over to emergency shifts and sign that into law. Resources are critical at this stage of the game and uh, emergency shifts make somebody work 24 hours. Uh, discontent will raise slightly but it will come in useful on day one. I also now have enough resources to build a hunter's hut so I'll build one of those in the second ring. I won't staff it until the end of the workday at 1800. That way the workers already gathering resources won't be taken away from their jobs. Hunter's huts only operate at night anyway. Wood is the big hole up in the early game, so as soon as it becomes available, I'll build a uh, cookhouse next to the hunter's hut or somewhere in ring two. Uh, this will effectively double your food output. Uh, take one raw food brought in from the uh, hunters and convert it to two food rations and it'll give you the added benefit of keeping your people happy because they're a lot better off eating processed food than raw food. A lot less likely to get sick. You'll soon get a notification that your beacon research is complete. So once that's done, it, it's a good idea to go into the technology tree as soon as you can and start research on sawmills. Uh, once that's done, you probably won't have enough steel resources to build the beacon but as soon as you have enough resources available uh, just go ahead and click it and build the beacon in the second ring also shortly after starting construction on the beacon the regular workday is going to end At that time you should take the opportunity to place the people working the wood crates on an emergency shift this will work them for 24 hours straight and will cause your discontent to rise uh, significantly but it's a necessary evil because you'll need the, those resources in the coming days you will eventually get a complaint from the people that they're worried about their shelter they don't have a roof over their heads I will usually answer this as I won't address it right now because I've discovered that if you turn the gener generator on for a few hours each night they can survive just fine until it gets really cold there is one last building you should start construction on during day one and that's a medical post and once again you place it out in the second ring always saving that first ring for the tents you're going to eventually build you should start finishing up a lot of these buildings at around the same time but when the beacon's finished, that's a special building and you get a special notice and a special cutscene for it. That's a big deal because you can go out and start finding survivors and getting extra resources to, into your city, things like that. So that, it's a good thing. Before you can uh, use your beacon, you got to free up some people so you can turn them into scouts. So you, you have to find some place where you can make a sacrifice in production. And as soon as you've got them available, uh, you'll get a notice that you know people are ready to search for survivors or whatever so you, you can create your uh, scouting party and then I usually go to the lost expedition and first and, and look for survivors 
In Frostpunk, you're always short of something, including people. Uh, you still need to staff the hunter's hut. I'll usually staff it with 15 people. Since it's rest time or sleep time right now, uh, pulling them off their regular assignment won't hurt anything. Where the chore comes in is if you want to reassign them when they're done hunting back to their regular jobs. But just like regular people, they're going to rest in between shifts. So I don't know how much it really gains you. It might be better to spread out the production loss over things you can handle. That's just kind of something that you have to learn from game experience. I prefer the micromanagement route because I do think you gain a little bit from that approach. Well, this is not bad for a first day's work. You've gotten two workshops built. You build a hunter's hut, a cookhouse, build a beacon, send out a search party to look for survivors, and build a medical post. And haven't lost anybody yet. So off, you're off to a pretty good start, and now it's on to day two. So starting on day two, you've got to remember to uh, turn on the generator around two o'clock and leave them for a couple of hours until around four o'clock in the morning. That way, when nobody will freeze to death while they're sleeping outside on the ground. Um, so far, we're doing pretty good. Just one, two sick people now, but we've got 80 homeless, and we'll take care of that on day three. Sometime during the day, the book laws will open up again. I usually go click on ad adaptation, and I will sign extended shifts in the law rather than do something with the children. This allows me to put uh, the workers on a 14-hour shift. Uh, discontent will rise a little bit and that's something we'll have to address eventually but right now they're not threatening to lynch me or put me in the exile or anything like that so I'm not going to worry about it right now. Once I've signed that law into effect I'll put all the workshops on an extended shift and any places gathering resources I'll also put them on an extended shift. Looks like my scouts are going to reach the lost expedition in about an hour and a half so in anticipation of them finding some engineers in that group I'm going to build two more workshops to just to be ready for them when they arrive. That way I can get a little more of a boost to my uh, research. Okay, my scouts have arrived at the Lost Expedition or waiting orders, so I will explore. There's a happy reunion, great. And I'm going to export, uh, escort them back to the city so I don't lose any of them. It takes a little more time to explore the surrounding region, but right now we've got time to do that. Sometime during the day you will complete research on the sawmill. So I will go into research and the next thing I want to look at is the steelworks. So I'll start researching that right away. I'll also build a sawmill as quickly as I can. And you would think since this, it's so cold out I'd be short on coal. But actually due to my conservation efforts, that's what I've got the most of in resources. So coal is not a big issue right now. And like I said previously, you always be short of something, including manpower. So you've got to remember to constantly rebalance your workforce to put it in more uh, productive areas. Like for instance, my uh, medical post is unstaffed, but since I've only got two sick people right now, I'm not going to worry about it. But I do have a built and ready to go. Uh, maybe I could have used the uh, resources earlier in the game for something else, but that's the way I uh, approach this one. When your scouting party arrives back at the city with the survivors, you'll get some engineers and workers and children. Uh, right away, that's an immediate boost to uh, your workforce that you can, you can use right away. Uh, the, when this cutscene will show you where there's a lot of reunions with lost families, things like that. So it adds a little flavor to the game. It's, uh, it's, it's pretty cool. So there's no reason to let your scouting party uh, sit idle. So I send them back out right away to the sturdy shelter to see if we can find resources, maybe more people, steam cores. Soon your steelworks research will be completed. I'm not going to build a steelworks right away, but I am going to start researching heaters next. That's the next most important thing, in my opinion, to, to get going. Once again, the book of laws will open up, and this time I'm going to do something with the children. I'm going to click on child shelters and sign that into law. That'll open up some options for me later on in the game to, where I can use them without putting them to work. So that ends day two and takes us into day three. Now so far the discontent's a little higher than I'd like to see it. Um, we've got 116 homeless people which we're going to take care of and only five sick people which is pretty good considering we neglected their medical needs. On day three I'm going to focus on getting more wood coming in since that's my big enemy right now. I'm also going to get some shelter for my people to make them happier and less discontent before they decide to lynch me or behead me or uh, exile me. 
all very unpleasant options that I would like to avoid. I'm also a little shorter on wood than I normally am at this stage in the game, so instead of building a child shelter, I'm going to build another sawmill as quick as I can so I can get the tents built. I've got three days to finish up the child shelter, so that shouldn't be too much of a problem. Once again, I'll turn on the generator for a couple of hours tonight. That way nobody will freeze to death until I get some tents built. Research will start being completed pretty quickly now. Um, I usually research the first tier except for coal thumpers and then I'll go down and do drawing boards. I'm so short of wood right now I'm not going to assign anything to research. I'll hop back in there later but, but first I'm going to uh, build my third sawmill and get things coming in. I've also got to build a child shelter before I run out of time or I'll get another significant hit on hope and discontent. But I've got three days to do that in so that shouldn't really be a problem. I've also got enough wood right now to build my third sawmill, so that's what I'm going to do. Your scouts will soon arrive at the sturdy shelter. I have them explore and grab all the resources they find. And rather than go back to the city, I send them out to the steel bridge to see what else they can discover. The last thing I'll do on day three is build 12 tents so I can get everybody in some kind of shelter. Uh, this way I won't have to turn on the generator this night and I will conserve more coal. Of course, there's a cold snap coming, so I'll have to address that on the next day, day four. The Book of Laws will open up one more time on day three, and I'll take that opportunity to sign engineer apprentices into law. That way, any children who are in child shelters can aid in research and add a little bit more to the research capability of the workshops. There's one th more thing that's coming up, and that's the medical needs. I've been ignoring the people's uh, treatment, and I'm starting to get a lot of sick people. I'm still going to ignore that for right now, but I'm really going to need to address that pretty soon. So to summarize day three, I've got plenty of wood coming in. I've got sh shelter mostly built for my people. I shouldn't need to turn on the generator tonight, and I can look forward to handling things on day four. There's still plenty more to talk about, but I try to keep these videos between 10 and 15 minutes long, and this one's going to hit right around 13 minutes. So anyway, I've got a companion page at my uh, website, LonerStrategyGames.com, and I will place a couple of links down in the description. So thanks a lot for taking the time to listen to my video, and uh, until next time, we'll see you later.